compiled a list of the various signals that this will display in the component inputs of the TV. I'll read them out. This is what it does support. 1080i at 50Hz, 1080i at 60Hz, 576i at 50Hz, 576p at 50Hz, 480i at 60Hz, 480p at 60Hz, and 720p at 60Hz. There's only one that I expected to work that didn't work, and that was 720p at 50Hz. It even states in the manual that it does support that resolution, yet I can't get it to work. But I could have sworn that I had that going the other day with the 360, but as it is, I have to report that 720p at 50 hertz doesn't work. So one out of the lot there doesn't work. So it's still pretty good. Still pretty good. It's fairly compatible still. And it'll take low lower resolutions like 480p and 1080i all on the same inputs. It's not like the Philips Pixel Plus that'll only take the low res stuff on one set of component inputs and the high res on the other set of component inputs. So a big thumbs up to Sony there. Let's see what it can do VGA wise. Look here now, we've got the PC running into the TV. If you're wondering how I hooked it up, I use a VGA ended cable that the laptop's in. And at the other end it's BNC and I use some little adapters from BNC to RCA. So there's no signal conversion there. It's just a matter of switching plugs to get the right fit. TV does the rest of the business. Uh, as far as the clarity is concerned, it's probably the best VGA TV I've seen. It's still not quite at the level of true computer monitor CRT, and it probably never will. I don't think you get a TV that'll have VGA that'll match a proper computer monitor, but it's still very good. And another good function that the Sony has, and, not, and a lot of others don't, is the ability to change from widescreen to normal. Right now the PC's resolution is a 640 by 480 so it's 4-3 aspect ratio and it should be in normal as, it's, as it is there. Now the icons, or the top and the bottom of the screen are a little bit out of sight. There, are, there is an option in the menu to, to change the vertical size. It doesn't change it by much and I'm hoping in the service menu that I could get it so that that screen will fit properly and all icons will be visible. Fortunately, I haven't done that yet, as I said before. So the jury's a bit out on that still. Let's try some more resolutions. This is 640 by 480. Let's go to 800 by 600. Yep, it's gone into a widescreen mode again. The icons are even further out of the screen. Let's try some more. 1024 by 768. Yep. Does that too. Heck, let's go. Let's go right up to the top. 1366 by 768. Yep. It's having a go at that. So it's PC resolution seems to be very, very um, compatible hasn't knocked back any that I've tried yet. So I'll give that a thumbs up. A bit of a tentative thumbs up. Um, as I said, I still need to get the, get the vertical size lowered so everything will fit in. But it does hold promise for a computer hooked up to it. I shouldn't forget to show you the remote. That's it. Now, as far as this memory card business is concerned, I did manage to find a memory stick with the same logo as the one depicted on the front there, but it's not big enough, my card. <laughs> won't fit in there. It'll fit in there, but it won't lock in. Yeah, I can go into the memory stick viewer, however. There we go. That's the TV's own built-in menu system for the memory stick viewer. It's pretty flash. You can look at photos. Not sure if you can view movies. This review wouldn't be complete without an input lag test, so I'll use Rock Band 3 right now.
current delay is 10 milliseconds. I've just tested it 10 times and the lowest was 8 milliseconds and the highest was 11. Very consistent. If you've seen my other video on testing old CRTs for input lag, the average is about 10 like this. So this is on par with your standard definition television. That's excellent. It's at the baseline. You couldn't ask for any more. One last test, and that is to see what happens when a 240p signal is entered into the television over the component input line. And to do that, I'll do what I usually do, and that's run the Nintendo Wii with a virtual console game. And there's a Strider on the Genesis, and I'm, I've got it in 240p mode right now. It's in widescreen mode. I've tested it in 4.3 as well, and I cannot find any faults. As I always say, this old school stuff, 240p stuff, better off with an older SCART RGB TV. It looks better that way. But the purpose of this test is to see if there's any faults. This is the first HD CRT I've seen that will display 240p on the component line correctly. It's not going super smooth and then stuttering like one of the other TVs I've tried it on. It's not displaying any graphical glitches or any artifacts caused by the TV, it'd be more correct to say. As far as I can tell, it's fine. So thumbs up to Sony there. Good piece of engineering. I'm gonna wrap this review up now. As far as improvements go, I would have liked to have seen an option to rotate the picture to get it perfectly straight but there's probably one in the service menu anyway. Another good feature would have been a degauss function that I could call upon at any time. Both of those are pretty minor quibbles, so it doesn't detract from the TV in any way. For picture, it's excellent. Probably the best picture I've ever seen on a CRT. Signal-wise, it's got very good compatibility. The only one that didn't work was 720p at 50 hertz. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. I just feel that there's probably some, a few games, or maybe one game out there on the 360 or the PS3 that have only been made to work in 7, 720 at 50 hertz. I could be wrong, but that would be a curveball if you stumbled across that. But overall, I don't think that's going to be an issue. As far as the price is concerned for this TV, um, you'd be looking at, I wouldn't pay any more than 200 for sure, actually. In fact, I wouldn't pay more than 100 but the prices do fluctuate quite a bit because it is a desirable item still. It's one of the few CRTs that does fetch a dollar. It has an excellent reputation. So there is demand for it, which drives the price up a bit. Availability is still very good. It's a Sony. Sony are popular. People knew that these were good back in the day, so there's plenty out there to choose from. You go for this bigger model or its smaller, younger brother. Um, you know, I, I, I can highly recommend this TV. In fact, I would, I would give it the crown as the best HD CRT. I haven't tested out every HD CRT in Australia. Not all of the high-end ones, so I can't quite make that claim 100%. But there's only another two contenders out there that I reckon that might have a shot at it. One of them I can't talk about too much because it's pretty rare and I've, I've got to track one down. And the others are Toshiba. Toshiba are very good CRT manufacturers. They have a HD model out there that might give this a run for its money. But I still reckon the Sony's going to come out on top. The only thing that could beat this CRT wise would be Sony XBR range. They might have a chance, they might be just equal with this, or maybe even a Sony broadcast video monitor. So it's going to be a Sony product at the end of the day that's going to be sitting on top. Anyhow, that's about it. That's about all I've got to say. Um, I reckon it's criminal that these TVs are thrown out. I think it's an excellent piece of engineering, quite possibly the best CRT ever made, and I would. I would store these. I would hoard them if I could get more of them. But as it is, uh, highly recommended. As to whether I take this over plasma or LCD, uh, it's a, it's sort of a tough question. But at the end of the day, I reckon I'd have to take a plasma just for the size difference alone. 
just to get that extra 15 plus inches makes a big difference. But having said that, the, the input lag is next to nothing on this CRT here. You won't find that on a plasma or LCD. If I was looking for a screen no bigger than the one in front of us right now, I wouldn't recommend going to LCD. I'd stick with the CRT here, but if you want big picture, 50 inches plus, here, yeah, go for your plasma or whatever else you've looked for. So, happy hunting on this one. Bye for now. I've just made a discovery. You may recall that in the video I said that the TV does not display 720p at 50 hertz. And I said I swore the other day that I played the 360 in that setting. Well, I've just turned on the little 32 inch version that I've got. And I've tested the 720p. Now it will test it at 50 hertz. And behold, now displaying at 50 hertz. Ignore the flickering that the camera is picking up. It's working fine on the TV. This means that the big 36 inch version is faulty or maybe that's the way it is. It shouldn't be though. The manual states that 720p at 50 and 60 hertz is compatible. So I might just have a faulty unit. But for anyone out there looking for the TV, it should work at 720p at 50 hertz. Thank you for that.